A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints. July the 6th. The Servant of God, Sancha. Widow, Second Order. If according to the words of Christ, it is difficult for the rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven, it is all the more admirable if those who possess riches use them to procure heavenly treasures. It was thus that the saintly Queen Sancha managed her possessions. She was the daughter of the King of Majorca and the wife of Robert I, King of Naples and of Sicily. She and her equally devout consort endeavoured to use their wealth only for the honour of God and the welfare of their subjects. She was much attached to the three orders of St. Francis, and used to say that this was not astonishing, since our Holy Father had in so many ways bound her to himself with his cord. In other words, a great number of her royal kinsmen were children of St. Francis, either as friars minor, or poor clares, or tertiaries. Sancha built a convent for the poor clares in Naples, which bore the title of Corpus Christi, and in which the Blessed Sacrament was honoured in a very special way. 250 cloistered nuns, coming from the most distinguished families among the nobility of the country, dwelt in that monastery, and conducted choir services there with great solemnity. During the octave of Corpus Christi, the church was richly decorated. The altar was a veritable mountain of silver, and according to Sancha's arrangements, all the clergy of the city participated in the solemnity. Her husband also bore the title of King of Jerusalem. This was an incentive for Sancha to ensure worthy veneration of the holy places, which were then in Turkish hands. It cost her and her husband great effort and large sums of money to obtain from the Sultan that the Holy Sepulchre, as well as Mount Zion in Jerusalem, be given into the care of the Friars Minor. In 1342, by a decree of Pope Clement VI, the sons of St. Francis were formally appointed guardians of the Holy Sepulchre. This commission they are still carrying out at the present day. Sancha was also solicitous for her subjects. Immorality was rampant in Naples at that time, and it caused great sorrow to Sancha. She had a large house of refuge built for public sinners, and so favourably impressed these unfortunates that several hundred became sincerely repentant, the greater number persevering in virtue. After the saintly death of Sancha's husband, she built another convent of poor clares in Naples, named for the Holy Cross. This convent was planned according to the strictest poverty, and the primitive rule of Saint Clare was observed faithfully. The Queen herself entered there as a plain sister. At her own request, the General of the Order forbade any distinction to be made in her favour, or any reference to be made to her noble extraction. She bore the simple name of Sister Clare, lived in profoundest humility, in great poverty, and in the practice of all the virtues. She had been a religious only 18 months, when God called her to himself on July the 28th, 1345. She died in the odour of sanctity. A reflection on the love of Jesus Christ. Consider how the love of Jesus Christ was manifested both in the life and in the works of this servant of God. In the Blessed Sacrament, she beheld the gracious condescension of our Lord, who wished to dwell among men, not only for a short while here on earth, but to the end of time. Behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. It was that thought which urged Sancha to provide a worthy dwelling place and becoming honour for him, no cost being too great for her. When a person possesses money, he soon betrays in what direction his love tends. If it leans towards pomp and pride, he will build an elegant house and equip it magnificently. If he loves his body, he will expend much for eating and drinking and all the comforts of the body. If he loves his money, he will cling to it and avoid even the necessary expenses. But if he loves our Lord Jesus Christ, he will take pleasure in spending money for his honour. For what purpose do you like most to spend your money? Consider that Sancha's love for Jesus Christ 
was evidenced also in her concern for the holy places. Greater love than this no man has, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15 verse 13 That is what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us, and the holy places in which he did so were being dishonoured by his enemies. That caused Sancha to shudder, and she made the arrangement according to which the holy places are to this day guarded with great reverence. Same love for Christ induced her to dissuade souls who had been bought with the blood of Christ from pursuing a life of sin. Do you experience any sorrow of heart when Jesus Christ and the things that pertain to him are dishonoured? Have you any zeal for the conversion of even the most despised sinner? You can determine the extent of your love for Christ by your measure of such sentiments. Consider that the love of Jesus Christ finally urged Sancha to leave the world and in perfect seclusion to serve God in poverty and in a very strict life. Love demands that we strive to become like our beloved. Christ lived in poverty and mortification and that is why those souls who love him feel inclined to adopt a similar life. And because the noise of the world so easily disturbs the love of God, the soul that loves Christ gladly withdraws from all unnecessary contacts with the world. He who has tasted the sweetness of intimate union with Christ in solitude will gladly let the whole world go by without giving it so much as passing attention. It was in this sense that the old hermit said, O blessed solitude, O solitary blessedness, Prayer of the Church O God, who hast prepared for those who love thee such good things as I hath not seen, pour into our hearts such tender love for thee, that loving thee in all things and above all things, we may obtain thy promises, which surpass all desires. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.